When I was just a little girl, my father told me that you can tell a lot about a man by looking at his shoes. Now, he didn't explain it fully, he kind of left it to my imagination, but he did say I would understand when I became an adult. And he was right. You can tell a lot about a man by looking at his shoes. If by chance you just have not had anyone walk you through the simple way to polish your shoes, polish your boots, or waterproof them, we're going to cover that today. Not only are we going to make sure that we condition the leather and get it clean and perfect, but we also want to be able to put a good shine on them and waterproof them so that they can handle any kind of weather that comes their way. So stay with us. Polishing and waterproofing can be almost a fine art to some folks. And if you already have your method down and you're loving it, this video is probably not for you. But if you're interested in knowing the different kinds of oils and waxes you can use on your shoes that are going to not only polish and nourish and replenish that leather, but also make it waterproof, stay with us these next few minutes. I'm going to just talk through a couple of oils really quick before we get into actually waterproofing and polishing some of my boots I've got here. First, let's talk about oils. Coconut and olive oil. Those can be used in a pinch. Those are great oils. However, they do have a tendency to go rancid over time. Even if you've put them on your boots and they're not necessarily great for waterproofing, even though they are great at making that surface look really shiny. So if you're running out the door to work and you want shiny boots, go ahead and throw some on, but it's not really going to be the end all be all solution, especially if you were hoping that they would be waterproof. Next, Neat's foot oil. That's a very popular uh, way to condition your, your boots and your leather shoes. Incidentally, it's made out of cow shins and their foot bones and it's great at conditioning leather. It's also great at just gently softening the leather, uh, lubricating it and giving it a really good shine. However, Neat's foot oil has kind of this acid in it that over time is going to kind of disintegrate that um, stitching that you have on your boots. So especially boots like this that have a leather sole as well as the leather body of the boot, if it has this nice cotton stitching that's around the edges, if you use Neat's foot, even if it does everything you hoped it will, over time it's going to disintegrate that threading because of the acid in Neat's foot oil. All right, another common one that people like is this mink oil, and it's a great option. I've been using it for many years. However, it does have pros and cons just like the others. Mink oil obviously is ma made from mink pelts, and it's great for lubrication and waterproofing. However, it is going to over time kind of dull that surface of your leather and not give it a high shine. So if by chance you thought that this was going to give your boots a nice, uh, spit shine on them, it really isn't. It's going to always be kind of dull uh, on the surface, which may be okay for you, especially if they're just work boots. It does need to be continually applied, so maybe every month or so you're going to make sure you work it in again. And the one thing I would say that kind of gives me pause about mink oil is this. Over time, it is so good at softening and conditioning that leather that it kind of breaks down the fibers of your leather boots. So they're gonna stretch. Now, if you gain weight, you'll be thankful for that. But in the event that you did not want your boots to keep stretching out worse and worse, you're gonna regret having used mink oil as your means for waterproofing. So that is an option though, and it works great if that's the goal is to just waterproof. A couple of the other ones that people use that are great in a pinch, but I'm only going to say they're great in a pinch, and that means if you're in a situation where you just need something really quick that might do the job. Jojoba oil is great for conditioning, but it isn't going to waterproof your boots well. Uh, also, Vaseline is a great one to use if you're just really tight and, and need to grab something very quick, but it isn't going to be the end-all be-all. Same with baby oil. Um, also, you've heard of toilet rings, that wax ring that seals your toilet against the floor. If you've got an extra one of those out in the garage, they're fantastic for waterproofing boots. But they have a lot of different ingredients in them. They're not necessarily made for this kind of thing. So I would encourage you maybe to not use that as your first choice. 
Also, in a pinch, candle wax can work. Um, if you've got some old candles nearby that you can grab up and rub on your boots, that's going to help, or even just regular old beeswax, grab some of that and you'll be in good shape. However, those are not the ideal. Same with baby oil. If I hadn't mentioned that already, that's one that a lot of folks love because it puts a nice shine on it, but it isn't going to fully waterproof it. Okay, this is what I do recommend. And we made this video just last week, so we'll link to it. But we made this wonderful all-natural boot balm or leather balm. You could also use it for chapstick if you need to in a pinch because it only has three all-natural ingredients. And those are beeswax, cocoa butter, and I would just say you could also use shea butter. Those are wonderful, either one. And the last thing it, that's in it is castor oil. And you could also use almond oil. It's your preference. It's a one to one to three ratio. So it's one part beeswax, one part cocoa butter, and three parts uh, castor oil. And this makes a fantastic, not only balm that's going to condition and um, replenish the leather, but it's also going to waterproof, which is our main goal. So let's get started in how you would want to go about applying this. First, let me say this. There are some boots that you can polish, but just aren't worth trying to expect to be fully waterproof. This is a good example. Any boots that have a tongue that comes that close to the toe of the boot, there's no way you can get that fully waterproof. So even if you use this on them, there's just no way that you're going to make them fully waterproof exactly as you would like. Boots that are worth polishing and waterproofing are boots like this that are nice thick leather soles and fully a leather body on them. Also, these are fantastic Tony Llamas that they've just made them well. Look at how that tongue of the boot comes all the way up. So all the way to here, it's going to be waterproof once we get done with these. And this is kind of a sealed section that has the places for the laces. They knew how to make boots when they made these. And these are excellent uh, to try and get waterproofed and we'll work on those. Also the boots I'm wearing right now, these are fry boots. And yes, they do have a zipper up the side, which is the only part that could potentially be compromised. I will say that once we're completely finished with this process, we will take just plain old beeswax and go right up that zipper. Um, but it also has kind of an inner placket that keeps it a little bit potentially more waterproof. And we'll use these as good examples of polishing today. If by chance you want to polish up or waterproof boots that are moist because you've been using them, either your foot has sweated in them or you have been out in the snow and gotten them wet, you're gonna first wanna set them by a nice fire, not too close because you don't want the leather to crack or, or dry out too quickly, but you do wanna set them at a reasonable distance from a fire or a, a little bit of a source of heat and just give them time. And if they're moist inside, some folks like to put a block of cedar wood in there, that helps. Or you can make one of the, um, coffee filter versions of the silica gel packets. You can make a nice big fat one and just throw that in the bottom of your boot and it's gonna soak up all that moisture pretty quickly. I love doing that and we have another video that we'll link to where you can see how to make your own silica gel desiccant packets that are going to dry out those boots nicely. So make sure they're completely dry before you start. Next, you wanna make sure they are clean. So I know that sounds probably simple to you, but it really is important that every bit of dirt and grime and even old wax buildup on them is taken away. You can usually do this just by um, maybe getting a butter knife and getting all the, all the crud out of the soles of them. You'll want to go around the edges and I just get an old toothbrush and, and just dry, don't get it wet, but just get out every bit of whatever is around the seam of that boot. That's important because if there's any residue of that left in there, it's not going to let it take a good seal. It'll just make a little pocket to be able to hold even more moisture later. So get them completely clean and dry. Once you've gotten to that point, it's time to go ahead and do a small spot test. So whatever you've decided to use, whether it's the boot balm that you see in one of our other videos or mink oil or whatever your choice is, just go somewhere on the back side of it in a little inconspicuous place and do just a little spot test. It'll help you know two things. It'll help you know if it's gonna darken the leather 
but it will also help you know um, if it's going to cover scuffs or not because if it doesn't cover the scuffs that are on the toes of those boots you'll probably need something like a Kiwi brand scuff cover or uh, shoe polish that's going to at least put the color back into that, those scuffs before you um, go and polish them up with some sort of a waterproofing sealant on top of that. If you do use something like this on the toes, make sure it has thoroughly dried before you proceed. So let's go ahead and polish my boots because I have spot tested these. I know this is going to work great on them and I'm ready to show you the before and after of exactly how you do this. Now, the best kind of cloth that you want to start with is some sort of t-shirt material or this is even better. This is cotton that is from an old uh, sweatshirt and it used to be my painting sweatshirt so it has little paint spots on it. But it's perfect for this kind of thing because it's kind of thicker than t-shirt material and it is not um, like a washcloth with the little terry cloth that can potentially scratch the surface of the leather and we don't want that either. You just want a very soft uh, fine weave type cotton. And also I would just say a thick flannel is going to work great as well. So you could use either a cotton or flannel, whatever is your favorite. I'm going to use this little piece that I used already once before. And just in case you didn't know how to hold it, the best way generally is to take two fingers and literally just wrap it kind of tightly around those two fingers and kind of hold it with the rest of your hand so you've got a nice little place right here where you can dip into the balm. And get some on it. Now, if you like your balm really, really um, slippery, I don't know what you call it, you can set this by the fire to melt up just a little bit, or if you like it to be a little bit thicker like this, just use it as is. But I'm gonna go ahead and start on my boots. I will say it is best to take the, the laces out. You don't wanna rub wax all over those, and you don't want to um, assume that you're gonna be able to do a good job of waterproofing with those laces in. So let me take these water, the, these laces out first. For me, I find it a little bit easier, and this is personal preference, but I find it a little easier to polish my boots and shoes while I'm wearing them. But if that's not convenient for you, feel free to just take them off. Somehow I feel like I can get it all through the nooks and crannies even better when I have them on my foot. I had seen a magazine ad for these exact boots and the perfection that they showed of what they were to look like. And I realized that I had gotten mine used and they didn't look anything like that magazine ad. But I was so excited to know that they actually could. <laughs> so this is going to get them looking as close as we can to that ad. And generally I would say this, folks prefer to put kind of a little light coat on first, then let it soak in with a bit of warmth and time, and then come back and put another light coat on. So really, to get these perfectly done, I would say probably three thin coats would work great. But I know I've seen my dad give up to five coats on his favorite boots before he goes out into the weather with them because he knows that every bit of effort you put into them is going to be worthwhile if you want them to be fully waterproof and serve you well. If by chance I get to the top of my boot and I'm concerned about getting it on my uh, pants, I just use a clean cloth that I have sitting nearby, tuck that in the top, and then you can get clear up there to the top of your boots without it getting on your clothing. and. This is certainly a way to protect it from that. Then I can get clear up to that very top edge without worrying about it. And those of you who don't polish your boots while you're wearing them, I understand you won't even need that little tidbit. All right, I've got the first coat on and I'm gonna go ahead and take my clean toothbrush and dip it in here and get a little bit of nice oil and wax on it and I'm just going to go right around that seam. Again I've cleaned it very very well but I'm going to get every 
nook and crevice fully saturated so there's no chance that water is going to penetrate that in the days to come. And I'll get down there on that leather heel as well. Every seam I'm going to go over with like this. After you have finished applying the leather balm to your boots, you're going to want to give them just a little bit of time to let that soak in. And don't get them too warm at the time, but definitely set them in a generally warm location so that it just has time to soak in for maybe about 10 to 15 or even 20 minutes if you like. Once that has happened, you're going to want to have two things on hand. For me, I've got the other arm. <laughs> of my sweatshirt that is that nice cotton that's perfectly clean and dry. I should have mentioned this earlier. If you happen to need to clean them well, some of the best uh, ways to do that I would recommend would be saddle soap, which is made for leather. It's wonderful for this kind of thing. Get yourself some of that and it's not expensive. Also, if you've got kind of mildew that grows on leather that's been sitting for a long time in a moist environment, to get that mildew off, just use a little bit of vinegar. It does great for getting that, as well as salt. If salt has caked up on your leather and settled in, just take some vinegar to that. Now there is the slim chance that vinegar will darken the leather just a little bit, but it still will save it from that mildew and salt, which are way worse than darkening just a smidgen on that leather. All right, we're rounding the corner on the finish line of this process. Remember that we're going to repeat all of these steps about three times. And like I said, men like my dad and brother who have really thick work boots that they want to go cut firewood out in the deep snow, they do this up to five times to make sure that their boots are thoroughly waterproofed. We've just got one coat on, but I'm going to step you through the last few steps of this so you can see how you would polish them up at this point. You're going to alternate between two steps. Here I've cut off the other sleeve of that wonderful uh, sweatshirt that I have that, that is that nice, very smooth cotton. And I've got my bristle brush that is that horsehair brush. I'm going to alternate between these two. So first I'll take this and I'm going to just do kind of a rocking motion back and forth to get that first shine going on the toes of these boots. And I'll kind of go over the whole entire boot this way. By doing this, it gets off any extra leftover, or if I got it a little bit thick in some places, it just gets that all wiped off and is settled into the leather the way it needs to be before we put the final shine on it with the brush. All right, now it's the turn of the brush, and this will be your final step once you've got these coats all on there the way you need them. This final polish will give it the nicest shine. And I just kind of do a little back and forth motion. It's somewhat cathartic to sit in the living room while you watch your dad doing this to his work boots, knowing how hard he's worked and how much pride he takes in his boots. But that's where I learned how to do it. And I hope that if this is your first time trying it, you take and teach it to some younger person that needs to know. Making sure every seam has been thoroughly brushed. And even the little cracks, we want to make sure those bristles get down into so that they can settle that wax in very nicely. All right, I've just about got it here. Remember, this is just the first coat, but I'm going to put the laces back on and we're going to hold them side by side just so you see the drastic difference. Yay! Look at it! Can you believe the difference? And like I said before, this is only one coat. So once I have done this three times, it's going to be exceptionally better. But already it feels softer, suppler, more replenished, moisturized leather. I mean, it's just like your skin. And I can be confident that it's pretty waterproof, although it does need a full three times of this really to feel good about it. But look at the difference. I mean, just compared to the other one, it's, it's incredible the difference that it makes. I am thrilled with the results. 
Now, whatever you choose to use is fine. Do what works for you. So whether it's the kind that you make yourself, like you see in our other video, or perhaps snow seal or mink oil, if that's your favorite, whatever it is that you use, get out there and get all those boots conditioned. I'm gonna finish working on my boots and get them all polished up and waterproofed for the rest of this winter, and I'm excited about that. But I will see you on the next video. And until then, I wanna just encourage you in this. God is looking out for you. He will not fail you. And I hope that you take the time this week to go out and tell that to someone. Be a blessing to someone this week. See you next time. Hey, before you go, I have to share this quick word of scripture with you. This is out of the book of Romans, chapter 15, verse four. It says this, for whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Now go spread the word.